Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in Old Road Blues playing as the Bone Cohort with the Bone Cohort submod of course for Old Road Blues and Rust, Mr. Bone Cohort Lover. But right now we got to talk about the lone centurion. Defectum was alone in his plans which meant that there were no stupid distractions or slowdowns. He knew the twins were on to him, they were going to kill him sooner or later so he needed to bide his time and convince all true loyal legionaries to follow his lead. Otherwise, the twins would lead the whole expedition to complete heresy and death, becoming such prolific it's like the people they try to command, but Defectum was not going to let that happen, ever. The Lois and Tyrans were here to, so Khazar's war would be followed to the letter, and he was not going to fail. We should deal with them, so that's going to hurt us quite a bit. But as you see, we actually took over the war, which is actually pretty nice. They have up to 10 to 16 divisions still. We delivered an okay amount of casualties. So really, Defectum has uh, got to go. Um, we got some trading to do here, we got some stuff we can do here. Um, we could begin scavenging program. How much money do we have? I think we have enough. Propaganda efforts, season patriotism, political actions, drastic measures. Don't really care about. So, what is it going to take to get rid of this guy? We need more political power. We're actually very close. So we're trying to attack here next, which seems pretty good for us. And we have the tip of the spears next. So we talk about the worthy few, which would be nice. More arms workshops would be pretty good too. But the Legion has spread across the southwest like an all and consuming flame. Mighty Khazar conquers the peoples of the wasteland. He strips some other tribal identities and turns their young men into ruthless legionaries uh, and women into breeding stock. And like the ragtag raiders back east, Khazar's legionaries neither look nor act like haphazard or regular troops. They are well organized, moving and attacking in large packs and deliberately commit atrocities to terrorize those who might dare oppose them. True, Khazar is a perfect man, but he's not. Just a man, he is the son of Mars, ordained by the god of war to conquer all earth, to prepare the way. Mars raised the earth, cleansed it with fire, and brought the weak and the wicked low, and now his son has come to deliver the wasteland from chaos and barbarism. To follow Kazo is to obey the will of Mars. To disobey is to condemn oneself to death, but there is a potential weakness. The Le Legion may rely too much on veteran legionaries for the direction and leadership. And a skilled enemy could exploit this weakness by killing its best from afar. They, that would be cowardly, certainly, indeed. So we just got to finish that one. I want to do more stuff over here, but we can't. So, the Forge of Cardinalis. Cardinalis is the armory of the Cohort, and, and the slaves know how to practice Prudentia in the service of the Cohort. Let's go over here real quick. Uh, legionnaires. Or Centurions. Yeah, three more organizations, pretty good. Nice. Well, that's for here, I guess. I'm not sure where the enemies are at. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna miss them. They're doing okay. Now they're attacking us here. The longer we're at war, the more we can actually create it, which is actually kind of decent for us. But they don't even like garrisoning, garrisoning the entire line, which is quite strange, I would say. Which means we got to assassinate Defectum before we, we completely win this war. Conquers the Northwest. It's gone. So be it. C'est la vie. We do have a cup of white tea here to keep us nice and satisfied, of course. After that one, the Unending Legions, which would be pretty good. More mobilization speed, recruitable population factor, break through 5%. The soldiers of the cohort will die, but they know the cohort will live forever. We are immortal when one, we are one with the bull. So there's quite a few enemies here, but it looks like that's pretty not fun to attack into. Here, though, might be more fun. Why are we just winning so easily? You know what, I'm not going to question that. I enjoy it. Hello? Warband with a home. They don't have a lot of stability. War sport. That's pretty good for them. Bane of man. Iron tax. Still got plenty of manpower. I would like to attack you through here. Getting to this tile would be very nice. Let's see if we can do a little bit more damage, perhaps. Are we missing anything here besides infantry armor? Support equipment, spec ops equipment, the normal stuff, you know. Ah. Assassin defect him. The lower Praetorian is dead. Our rule in the Northwest will be safe. Kaiser might have sent him to watch over us, but he's only getting in the way. His death will secure our future. <sighs> because we're currently uh, this direction, which is not great. Mm, we'll go that one next. 
Good. Everybody helps out. Do we need any more money? Or political power for anything here? Uh, we still could do this stuff, which wouldn't be bad. We're in Willowcup Army already. I like the attack still. The elite support. There's a little bit of manpower and attack. More enforcer attack and defense and in speed. Well, let's see what happens first. It's because we can go over here and do this too. Deal with stationers. Anything else over here? Ooh. I have a person missing or two, eh? Hmm. Suspicious. Oh, they still want to attack us? I'm okay with that. I want to attack here. Could you win here, perhaps? You know what, at this point, screw it. We're just going to go with uh, that one. Ah, the mercenary from Kamelt. Akri stood at the courtyard of the future tech facility with some of the warriors and sisters. Of course, he didn't want to give up his family and best soldiers to screw all slavers from the Far East. Ooh, I'm going to hold it real quick. When the Bong Centurion came with his twin brother and his Praetorians, Akri could feel the dread as Sydney hid behind him. But the man's green eyes peered into his soul. Sydney of Nova Austria, 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 joins the Bong Court. I'm giving you the chance of your lifetime, he said while extending his arm towards them. Akri will join us as a general and Sydney will become an advisor. Sydney of Nova Austria. Ooh, research efficiency game. You are worthless, your women will work in the fields, and your men will be crucified. At this point, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to still choose this one. You are worthless. I like being called worthless, apparently. Well, we found him. They certainly wanted to attack us again. Are you there yet? Come on. Lost 200 versus 750. Pretty decent. Let him waste our manpower as we do the forge. Simplify designs. I'd like to see about that one. The unending legions. Vexillaris. Initiative does help out apparently quite a bit. Gecko support. We're training to have a more breakthrough and more slots attack. Uh, where else is it? Is that it? Simplify designs. Centurions. Horns of Moroni. I guess it would help if we did have a cam company supports. Strange, I don't see it, but whatever. Airship spotted. It was a calm night. In the lands of the core, when suddenly, by a weird noise in the sky, the whole camp was alerted by a yelling legionary. Or legionnaire. There was a machete machine in the air, barely making any noise as it moved above the camp immediately. The veterans and primes prepared the heavy guns and aimed at the flying machines. Continuously until they saw it slowly lose speed, starting to lose altitude too. A message was sent to the Bone Centurion immediately. And by the time we reached the camp, you could see it. The massive hokey machine that was an airship, a blimp, or whatever these people called it. They said they were merchants, and they wanted no problems that had any intents with the Legion. Ill intents. Borealis and Australis were really impressed by this marvel craftsmanship, but a decision had to be made. The blimp could be repaired, and its crew and slave to be taken to Nova Borea for research and development. Tell us more about your people. You'll scrap the blimp for materials. Ooh. I like it. Increase the amount of experience I get right now. Oh, we're definitely gonna lose this, aren't we? Well, if we lose one place, we're gonna uh, assault another. Uh, that's a giant tile. Okay, so we held out there. We're still holding out, which is good. But still. I really want to see what's going to happen with Defectum. Alright. 
Alright, I guess we're going to deal with the travels. Let's play focus. Another bear river. Decimation, we're going to lose some recruitable population factor. Game or division experience. And more organization, which is very good. And wage formations. How do you have so much? Technology sharing. Friendship, friends of Kaiser. Huh. More breakthrough initiative. That's good. Even more organization for us makes us even stronger. What you do love? We need infantry armor, spec ops, support equipment. How much money do we have? I would just buy some support equipment. Can we do that? Gun runners. Well, we need 35 opinion. Oh, we need 25 opinion. It's 22. Increase opinion by one. Well, there we go. Hello. Well, that's certainly not ideal. If you really want to try it, that's fine, I guess. As long as we're holding all over the place here, the chieftain of the Shoshone. Techki was distraught at the sight of his people being paraded around the new markets of this Nova Boria. His hands and shackles as he was forced to kneel in front of a huge throne made by the bones in the biggest plaza uh, that he had ever seen. A man with bright green eyes sat upon him, looking down at everyone, but closer in front of him. A man who looked exactly like others in the throne smiled, extending a hand towards the kneeling Shoshone. You want to save your people, don't you? I had Pathfinder. Smith and my brothers will not send your people away. Techki will become an advisor. Your bones will be good addition to the throne, and your people will suffer. Sure, why not? The eating defect him. The setup. I understand to climb up the ladder of bribing or assassinating centurions had done quite a bit for Boreas in his pursuit of becoming the effectively unquestioned leader of the Oregon. Yet, all despite his preparations, uh, nothing could prepare him for the one on one confrontation. Any subterfuge would be detected or easily avoided, and doing anything that betrayed the ideals of the Legion, uh, as lax as the remaining centurions had become on it, would risk compromising not only the ideals of the Bones of Tyrion, but that of Kaiser and the cohort. And so, the only option was to formally challenge him. Enter the former lounge of the facility, now a makeshift gym and training area. Boreas called out for the loyalist. Upon receiving no response, he shouted, Provocatium invocare volo. Stepping out from behind a large bus of Kaiser, the Praetorian struck down the hilt of his Praetorian standard, Volug. You trim the fat of the court, you chastise, a, chastise lust and sin within its ranks, and you cast down those who do not with Kaiser and loyalty to your heart. And yet you come to me invoking a right of parley? And in better circumstances, I'd honor your request, but I have no need for words, I have my blade. With that, the Praetorian. The last of the Centurion Council propped up his patrol arm, taking several slashes at Borealis. The words didn't sting, but the cuts from the blade certainly did, defeating defect in the battle. Blood had already been drawn, yet, unlike the other battles, it was Borealis bleeding out his enemy. He had no backup, the clothing on his back for armor, and his usual 45 pistol and uh, machete gladius. It was under man, unprepared, and under attack. He knew to defect him was loyal to Kaiser, but to be loyal to the point of immediately assassinating a Centurion without entertaining parley. He knew he had to make the right decision of seeking to assassinate him in the end, but his mind nearly showed off, and if there was a better way. A mind thought that briefly opened an opportunity for Defectum to perform one of the Praetorian's most notorious tactics, the assault. Leaping forward, the Centurion leaped up into the air, thrusting the right palm forward, left hand still gripping the pole arm straight into Borealis's face before landing back on the ground. The force in motion at uh, the impact sent him stumbling back, right into a punching bag that had been set up in the ba back corner. I always knew Kaiser sent me an inferior to attempt to replace me, I just didn't know how easy you would be to turn into a punching bag, my punching bag. Blows came left and right, one, two punches, eye gouging, the pain built in Boreas's body. He'd taken this abuse once before, he could take it again, but for how long? Defeating Defectum, the end. Defectum made nearly, nearly a scratch on his body. Borealis was covered him from head to toe in his own blood. The polearm lynch inched ever closer to Borealis, the tip digging itself into the exposed flesh of his skin. Slowly, Defectum began to cut into Borealis' torso, making small but deliberate marks. The centurion felt each and every letter carved into his skin, traitor. At a point like this, Borealis could have submitted. He could have given up. He could have accepted his fate, the foolishness of not preparing for his most dangerous foe yet, but he wouldn't. He couldn't. He was a bone centurion, the founder of Nova Boria, the scourge of the or Oregon. Grabbing the tip of the spear just before Defectum could plunge into his heart, Borealis pushed with all his might, sending the spear straight into the Praetorian shoulder, creating a deep mark. Using what sight remained in his eyes, Borealis continued to push the Volug further and further. Defectum is still taken aback from the centurion's fierce fight, as was a pain in his shoulder. The blade eventually reached the bone, causing Defectum to wince. As the pole arm finally cut through, Defectum's right arm came clean off. Defectum gritted his teeth and cleared pain, but managed to grumble, nothing but a scratch. And so Borealis kept pushing on, using the combination of vigor and the Praetorian's pain to slice his remaining arm off, the limb falling to the ground. Now, nothing more than a head and a body with legs, Defectum made a final feeble attempt at charging Borealis, attempting to headbutt him into a spike trap, placed for a would-be intruder is now meant for the bone centurion. Instead, though, 
Boria simply stepped out of the way, chopping Defectum's head off with a final mighty swing, while his headless body charged into the spikes. The Praetorium was dead, though Borealis was also a worse for wear. Oof. Legion wave tactics, that'd be pretty good too. Even if we are far away from Arizona, an almost infinite amount of men the Kaza commands, the idea of wave tactics can still be used. Instead of letting our men march to their deaths, we shall use slaves to do so, drowning the enemy under the most insane and psychotic slaves who risk everything for the chance of becoming legionaries, while our men deal with enemies at a distance. Well, we dealt with him. And the mechanic is gone, so we don't have to deal with him anymore. Yes! Triplex, look at that, that's very nice. Unending legions. God, they just want to just beat the crap out of us here, don't they? It's kind of annoying. But it is grinding out a lot of army XP, which is fantastic, of course. You can win, but at what cost? Armor, more support equipment, which is pretty normal. Losses 400 versus 1000. 1100, not bad. What else we got here? Anything else we really care about? No, if that's the case. We have 18 demo teams, fire teams, anti tank. Um, and we have demos already on these guys, which is pretty good. Plenty of guns. These guys need more, but can we even supply them with more? Honestly, no, not really. Oh well. Do we have any special forces equipment? No. That sucks. Let our guys move around real quick first. Stockpile, they ran out of a lot of stuff, which is good to see. So we're going to slowly continue pushing to the lands. With plenty enough support though. Oh god, the battle for Hoover Dam is not good. Not ideal. Get over there. Swords, pioneer kids, yes, please. Nice. And we're gonna do this one next because we need armories. With more and more artisans and blacksmiths joining our ranks, our foundries become factories. Guns and equipment are produced at breakneck pace to fuel the conquest of our glorious cohort. We can move tactics. Let's take a look see. Because we saw that one earlier. Oh, combat with goes down. Okay, that's good. Very good, actually means we can throw another one here too. Even thicker, because we do have the manpower for it and the infantry commit as well. Old world wall does hold. Very good. So Alamo chapter, another division was made and created for us. Very good. They're just really, really freaking aggressive. What do you expect from the trolls, though? Peace? Alright, let's come back over here. Ah, finally! We have a decent amount of support equipment fine again. Road warriors are not bad. I don't really care a lot for them, though. These are pretty decent, though. You do like. Maintenance, tank fire team. 
items. What if we added one more? 18.7, huh? Prime legendaries. Oh, it's pretty nice. These guys are okay. These guys, Bone Praetorians, are just where it's at, though. These are not bad, but... Buy infantry armor at all. Just Pete. I'm glad the mod recommended us use this because I would forget about using all the stuff. But I suppose now nah, it doesn't look like it. Saws, LMGs, empty tank, you know. All the normal stuff. Make your infantry even thicker if you can. You guys go there. Do you need a circle division, maybe? That would be fantastic if we could. Go there. Nice. And you are almost there. Very good. They want to escape, but they've chosen their fate. Death. Bone Legionaries. The cohort is adaptable. It learned from the Shoshone. It learned from Borealis. It learned from the struggles of the Timberline Rangers. And it will learn from all others who are trampled beneath his feet. Ah, oh, they true to Kaisar. Oh, the Bone Centurion, really. Well. Could go that direction. Interesting choice. Hmm. Sweet home, go there and take him out too. Nice. More special forces, please. Good. How about another encirclement? And crush another division. Which formations are good? More initiative, even more breakthrough. Cane formations. Even better infantry combat with, my god. Walk infantry, get more breakthrough, soft attack. I love it. Oh, look at that. He's gone. So we definitely need this person next. We did lose a tiny bit of attack, eh? It's fine, whatever. At this point, uh, I want you to go here. Let's go here. See if you can make an encirclement. Oh, or it doesn't matter. We won. Look at that big old bone core. So, can we actually make anything here? No. What is the culture? Today, the funeral of several bone dancers, legionaries, who joined up in the cohort and gave everything in the service of the cohort. Unlike back in Arizona, every lost legionary or legionnaire uh, felt like a huge blow to the core. Every legionnaire who fell was something that affected everyone in the decade. And now, due to the different cultures, those that from the, those that came from Arizona to the Christians that helped us looked in horror. Bori also uh, promised Septim that if he died, he would do the honors. That was a wonderful bone dancer, a great warrior that maybe someday could have become a centurion, but his life was cut short as it usually happened in the wasteland. Now Boreas was skinning its skull. After most of the skin and eyes were burnt off, they needed to remove the rest of the chunks that remained. It was a delicate process, as it could not escape or damage their skull underneath. It was not the first time he had done it. Boreas and Australis had both learned the art from the elders of the Bone Dancers once they finally conquered them and they were naturals at it, clearly showing the heritage of his father. At last, the skull was washed and put on a little pedestal as a family of Septum came to pick it up, bowing at the Bone Centurion. The skull was joined to the others of his ancestors in his clan's lands. The Bone Dancer has never forgotten. All we do is not forget those who did the dance of bones. Everyone shall sit in the halls of God and Mars be judged in the end. Remember, Septum, and sacrifice. Remember, the bone cord, and it, as it's everything that remains after you are gone. True to Mars. God, I got all that one done. Nice. Next. 
Picking a bone. Because we do get what? Removing troll tactics. Um, interesting. I like that, but I want to go keep going to war. Klamath, Port Maw, Mire Lurks, Timberline. Yeah. Um, I read this one last time, so if you don't need this one, please go ahead. Yeah. Timberline is next. Yeah, no, you're not going to push this around, eating dogs. Because after that one, we will do... Picking a bone. Even if the lands of the east are of the bone dancers, the recent conflicts have made a mess out of them. A firm hand is needed, and we have chosen the right spot to make a new city state. Uh, I think I read this one too before. Dark gift. The odious king still has a stash of geckos. Now he's enslaved the will of the cohort. Uh, he's he gave us a showing of his knowledge and obje objects. Objects. If we accepted them, we could have gotten this. Except the pilgrims. Oh, well, I guess we're locked out of a lot of things then. Well, I guess we're going to have women's rights, then. Oh, well. This wouldn't be bad, either. Oh, this side's open, too, huh? It's not ideal, but it is what it is. Hmm. We wait at first. How long is this gonna last? Of course, we can only make things when we're at war. Could we move fast enough into the lands to take them out? That's a good question. Not sure. They have quite a few things here too, so... They attack us, we attack them, yes. in place for now. And if this doesn't go well enough, well, we'll make sure it goes fine. Lands of the Bone. The lands of the west of the Bone Dancers used to be part of the Bone Domain of Old. Clearly affected by the madness of the Crimson Forest. The followers of cannibalism and the ritualistic murder spread like wildfire in the east, but now they've been seen fighting each other, from rib breakers to marrow drinkers and finally carcass walkers. The threat of a hidden mutant faction deep in the caves of Oregon emerged from the so-called Troll Warren, the many caves and tunnels, tunnels and caves, free of radiation and filled with resources, have been selected to become the new city state aptly named Profundum to rule over the lands. The western city of Salem was almost chosen, but Profundum was too good of a place to not use and exploit, now to deal with the mutants. Ooh, get more attack. Remove stuff. Gain the core in the war. And Borealis takes a photo of the moment. Let's trust the camera. I love getting more slaves. It's so nice. So we do want to get down here too. Right? Yeah, that'd be nice. Nomadic lifestyle. Camp followers. Uh, we'll do Klamath. Why conquer Klamath? Two of the centuries have asked, but Eridanus has shut them up. Out of a gateway to the south, bring traders from Nevada into our lands, and they do have some nice geckos and tolerate tribal customs. In this conquest, Kaiser looked and forced tribals to forget their own ways and wipe the slate clean. But we are not Kaisers, we are the Bone Cohorts. We shall learn and improve from every defeat of foe. Their gods will be ours, their children will be ours, and their knowledge, of course, will be ours. And here we're at, everybody. We're still trying to beat the crap out of these guys. We've made a couple encirclements here and there. We've delivered 3,000 casualties, but we're doing some other things, such as using improved tools. By using rocks to sharpen our tools, we can make them even better. Artisan tools. 
Found a few old hall taps that seem to detail how to make proper old world weapons. Uh, invite southern traders. By inviting traders from the south, we can improve the riches of our people. Seems like all pretty good stuff overall. Uh, go down next, tear for leaf. These guys are... They just literally just want to die here, which is fine with us. I mean, they really want to grind it out, so... And we're down here too, but we're not really doing too much with them. Because they have volunteers from the free fighters. Well, Klamath is next, right? Yes, sir. That's very good. Production would be nice. Yes, please. Help them out there. Keep grinding it out. And we got them. And part of their navy. Ooh. Oh, look at that. What a fantastic navy. Totally worth using. Um, what are we at here? So the infantry stuff, these guys are nice now, but they're still 20 combat width, but these guys are 15. We can throw a whole another 1, 2 on there, and we're still back at that much. I kind of want to get to take heart first before we do that again, but we'll see. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and do a deal with the valley. And then after that, cutting the timberline. People used to say that timberline was the only civilized tribe in Oregon, and that they were the most helpful and friendly peoples of the West. We'll see their quality of slaves and scouts, of course. Better infrastructure, construction speed, more attack, max factories in the state, recruitable population factor. Uh, fine. Vacuum tubes, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Holding a mirror to the Gorgon. The mirror drinkers, purportedly masters of the manipulating minds, both with words and a mysterious device that many of the warriors seem to wield, were the queen wielding the most powerful one yet, like many of the tribes before, Boreas had beat them them all, except the queen. You didn't have to truck too far to find to look for her, as she made herself known almost immediately, surrounded by a group of mesmerized animals and mutants alike. You may have defeated my memorized forces, but you shall never defeat me, Bone Baron. Mwahahaha. <laughs> Boreas didn't have time for this nonsense. Pulling out his machete Gladius, he began to charging towards the queen and her forces. Claws and talons grasped but were quickly removed along the head of her owners. Their owners. In a few short moments. The Mero Queen's ragtag force had been reduced to only the queen herself. No, the tech predicted this would happen. If only I had to t uh, attain the next issue to know what would happen next, but I shall take you down with me before I ever succumb to your blade, you foul fiend of foolishness. With that, the queen. Pointed her hand towards the centurion, preparing his blade, Boreas tense for the impact and effects of the mysterious device, hoping he would not become as mindless as a force as he had faced. Yet, in a miraculous stroke of luck, the bolts of the Mero Queen's hands struck not him, but the shining metal of his blade were already directing the blast straight back, straight at Mesmeralda. No, my powers, you're somehow using them against me. Curse you, curse you. A brilliant flash of light engulfed Mesmeralda's head upon dissipating. Boreas was met with the sight of the Mero Queen, but with the added change of having a hollow, vacant look in her eyes, her mouth slack, your wish is my command, Master. A very interesting development, one that may come in handy. Mesmeralda will join her people in collecting bones. Maybe someday Boreas will be able to harness his power by the Rib Breaker. Skulls, bones, and ribs. The green-eyed men promised me as much. Doris said happily as he joined the cohort when his, his lands east of Salem were conquered. He had such a bloodlust and wanting for battle that it was quite easy to adapt to the brutality of the bone cohort. His little femur breakers would make short work of any, any suspecting foe. A great addition to the cohort. Just don't put any femur breakers near me. Doris will join us as a general. 6,000 slaves, huh? Uh, we can buy some more slaves. You know what? I want to buy some more just because we can. That's right, because we can. Um, Nova Borio. Oh, we should probably begin a route to Vault City. Nice. The first of the troll worm. This man carries a heavy burden, a memory so long and so bright, like a shining star. The first chose to submit to the bone cohort. Did not let his fellow mutants to die, even if the legionaries uh, wore the bones of his kind as throppy. He knew that doing otherwise meant destruction, of course, following a man with such conviction. And strange green eyes was invigorating for an old mutant like himself. But what was going to happen, as long as they served the bone centurion? Steer me in auxiliaries. I don't care what color or who you are. You are a slave to me. But fi join us in the, the first leading them. We don't need dumb mutants. They are totally worthless. Can we do anything here against them, maybe? Yeah? Nice. And then... Uh, Mirelurk Conquest. The Mirelurks of huge crab beasts is not a rifle way of government. We need weapons that can pierce the shells we want to destroy and surround these beasts. The centurions want to eat crab meat. Do we have enough for anti-tank? Honestly, no we don't. Oh, they're at war here too with the uh, new Reno. Oh. 
Interesting. That might put us into a war with the arena, which is not good. Huh. What's the defense I see, huh? The Timberline. Many would question why the cohort pushed north so early to take over the Timberline, but the resources and people of Walla Walla had to be destroyed very quickly, or the resistance they could put up was going to be too numerous and massive to stop in the future. The cabins of forest would clearly need some time to be dealt with, as the pathfinders left to hide in them, but the true peace and calmness was brought to the most of the forests of Oregon, and they were going to become a reserve for the meantime, for nature to prosper. Walla Walla was better named Exploratus, the new training grounds for the Pathfinder and Scout Corps of the Cohort, adding under their R equipment, of course, keeping its timber industry at its highest priority. Such a beautiful land. Get more logistics skills, special forces equipment. Ooh. Get a course, civilian workshops, of course. Infrastructure, arms workshops. Love it. Bring it to manpower, too, unfortunately. Yeah, so we're going to need a Cadunt Ossium. Seriously? Grind them into nothing. Good, and now they can no longer recover any of their strength. Good, he's a little more manpower. There you go. This is really gonna piss him off. So this one is that two? Okay, so we gotta separate ourselves. If that's the case. Praetorians, there are four divisions of you. You right there. You'll be the one leading our enforcers group. Enforcer attack speed. Most of us will have that eventually, whatever. Your special forces. These are very special forces. Timberline story. Matthew used to live in the Timberline. When he used to be called that way, his father was a pathfinder, part of the scouts, but he never was good enough to join them. He couldn't get used to the harsh living in the woods. That's why when the cord came to his little camp where he lived with his extended family, his little cousins and siblings, he immediately surrendered, expecting a quick death due to the savagery and evilness that the traitors spoke about the Legion, but they were not the Legion, they were the Bone Cohort under the so-called Bone Centurion, and they even spoke of him with such an emphasis and respect that it felt like it was a god. A living one, nevertheless, though. Matthew knew that no gods existed until that day. The legionnaires told them to submit to believe in God and Mars as they were one and the same, to believe in Borealis, the bone centurion, as he was the avatar, the living representation of God himself. Matthew still did not believe, he didn't trust him, but to save his younger siblings, he lied. He bowed, he kissed the ground, and surprisingly, the legionnaires gave him a small bone talisman. Tell him to go south, to show his t talisman to any person of the cohort he found, so he did. As his father taught him, they packed up their camp and started the trip south, always showing the talisman happy faces, friendly faces, always giving him supplies, always leading towards the south. He saw death, the piles of bones, he saw a piece of pole crucified, and saw people hanged. 
But he did not find any hostile creatures. He did not find any raiders. Just the road, at last. He reached the capital, the place where he was told to go. Seeing slaves, people chain and forced to work, he saw more crosses, empty and waiting for more people. But he, as he reached the entrance, the huge gate of the city, a man stopped him and his group, a legionary, clearly in command uh, due, to, due, the, due to the enormous in his clothing and the quality of his armor. Where are you going? The legionary questioned. I was from the north, a group of legionnaires. Uh, legionaries gave us this. Legionary. Legionnaire. Question of the new group of legionaries gave us this. Matthew answers. He showed the small talisman, making a small grin appear on the legion, legionnaire's lips. As the man's eye slowly went towards one of the crosses. Come with me. Let me show you the city. The highwayman. Australis looked over his brother, then back at the map, then back to his brother. How long has this been going on? The more intellectual of the twins shook his head, almost two weeks. The bones and Tyrion sent a fist slamming into the table. A single person in a car managed to cut almost twelve decades worth in two weeks. A sigh and maimed several of the veteran deconuses. If not for Narcissus, we wouldn't have been able to learn about who was committing these attacks under men at all. The other fist grabbed the model car, representing the car of their choice of their attacker to use, because of one of our own veteran deconuses. Running from a battle, crying as a baby cries to his mother, it's such a good indicator of the men we train to fight the savages. Australis struggled. If it's any consolation, we got plenty of details from them. The make of the car is a Chrysler's highwayman. Not too common out in Legion lands, but apparently a rather iconic kind of car out here. Belonged to some fancy person they call the Chosen One. None of the travels we took I had heard of him. Her? I'm not sure what gender they are, but what I can tell is that they're not someone to be screwed around with, according to some of my sources down in the prolific lands. They used a nuke on the oil rig, some sort of oil rig, but took out people, uh, some people called the Enclave. <clears throat> and they were responsible for the extermination of organized slavery up in Oregon, which is why we've been able to take so many slaves so easily. Fist raised, smoothing unkempt hair back into place. Why us? Why us here and now? It seems like I tired of leadership. And the places they come from. Big city called a royal. They left their people leaderless. You know what that means, don't you? Ready the troops. The bone court would not be mocked. Bro. Well, now we gotta fight New Reno. They don't look super strong, though. They must be out of infantry equipment or something. Time to Gecko. <coughs> Geckos and traps. That's what most locals tell us about Klamath, but we've tamed the geckos already. It only takes some time to remove the traps. Oh, whoops. Oh, I need more. Oh, I can't even save that manpower, dang it. Fine. That'd be good to get a core on him, anyways. So you're going to still be inspirational. And, of course, leave a bloody mess, but still. We're definitely going to do more defense. There's a lot of divisions right here, which is kind of worrying. We'll have to use these infantry to really push hard into the enemy. It's gotta be a primitive radio. Let's see how they take to us. Oh, they're gonna take forever against us. Um, if that's the case, we might have enough time to get the some of these guys here too. Hmm. No, not just you. I want everyone here. Eureka declared war on a royal, huh? Trapper Town. Klamath was, uh, was just a trapper town. Of course, it owned quite a bit in the last few decades, but as a cohort finally entered it, the people surrounded uh, extremely quickly. Not so many crucifixions were given that day, but most of the men fighting age were executed on the spot. The traps made quite the damage of the men in the cohort, and they wanted revenge. Klamath was the gateway to the south, to California and beyond, so it was extremely important to take over it and secure it, which immediately started the rebuilding efforts of it and the centralization of the new city-state. The name given to the new settlement was Erdanos, and the name of the mentor of the bone centurion, the centurion Erdanos. Erdanos, look! Geckos! Nice. Yeah, we could use some manpower. 
buying male slaves. Oh, that'd be good to do. Lessons from the Bone Dancers. The Bone Dancers recently got a huge influence from the Warriors of the Road, a group which used to control the highways of Western Oregon and Utah to the east. Their knowledge of vehicles will be huge, hugely appreciated. So I just don't think we can do very much against these guys. We don't have a ton of organization, but we also don't have any anti-tank. Which means we got to buy some anti-tank. Which we can't. We need a point of opinion. Thirty-one. Change by five, seven. We need eighty opinion. Oh my god. So we do this. We're at war. It's fine with us. We can actually make stuff. You know. I just don't think we can push, can we? We need to grind out army XP. Anyways, conquer of the northwest really hurts us. It really sucks. Cold of personality is good though. Strong right flank. Yeah, it's good. More defense is good. More speed, more breakthrough, more speed as well here. Alright, that's good enough. Are we gonna have enough? No, god no. Why would we? We're gonna beat these guys first and then take on Narino. We should be okay. Memphis looking okay, not great, but okay. All but you are gonna attack here, and all but you are gonna attack here. Good. People that dances. Boreas and Australis never spent too much time with the rest of the Bone Dancers. Their father was a hermit, which lived on the borders of the lands. Yet, they knew a lot about the dances, as his father once even did one. Their technological prowess was known all around Oregon, and now that their lands were under the control of the twins, they finally sat down with the elders and the chieftains of the dancers to finally learn their knowledge. Good. Grind out that army XP. Which sucks if we can't get any more of the water burn. The militia is no problem. The, s the shells are hard to beat, though. Oh, we're getting there, though. Can't get there before they do, huh? It's very nice. Good, spread them thin. So we like them. Good, now we should really reckon in all this. Uh, guns of the dancers. As Borealis and Australis spent time with their tribe, they learned of the ways of warfare in Oregon. The different ways that one could truly become a bone dancer, and the most important thing was the support. The company and the friendship that the soldier could get from his peers, support, and camaraderie.
I'll support attack here and cut him in half, and we can probably crush him that way. Do I need manpower now? Oh, here we go. Must be very good. There's only one division here, but, you know, it still work. Come on. There you go. Go across that way. Let's put the attack. More than fine. Good, good, good. Awesome. First group down. Crowlands. How much more time do we have against New Reno? More than enough time. We might be able to take out the Apostles as well, potentially. Boundaries of the Dancers, which will help reduce core creation cost. Newly made foundries and factories in the outskirts of Nova Boria are filled with slaves working tirelessly day and night, making new weapons of war for the cohort, nonetheless. It's the most safe and comfortable job in the outskirts. A barely equipped expedition with a cohort without a state. Consumer goods factories factory goes down, better resource efficiency gain, division attrition, and supply consumption. Construction speed, factory output, max entrenchment, worse equipment capture ratio modifier, which is whatever, trade income, core creation costs, which is what you really want. I don't the NCR, but you know, whatever. Can quickly dash through here and keep these guys in place. Good. Colt Creek. Must be ours. Come on. Good. We want crab. We got crab. It's going to be very difficult for them to hide now. Ooh, this will be good. Recruiting menial slaves. It's not bad. Slave collar tricks. Focus on getting more collars when forcing slaves to make them. Oh, the art of making slave collars is something that some of our trade partners have found amusing. How does a person who is wearing a collar feel when they have to build the same object that would bring pain and suffering to others? But teaching them the virtues of being a slave. A slave collar is not a tool of oppression, it is a garment, a sign of one's true belief in what Mars and the Bone Centurion believe. Teaching the slaves to be proud of the collars of their suffering and their future freedom would increase the production of them. That's what our slave masters have said, at least. Buy male slaves, so if you let the sun set you free, you will be free from indeed. John 8.36 so we are lacking a huge amount of men, so of course any man can become a re recruit legionary with a new uh, training, then so be it. We'll buy all the men from the surrounding slave traders, and the survivors of the training will become part of a cohort as brothers in arms. Of course. They've got crabs too. Oh man, they have crabs, that's not very good, but whatever. Core without a state. It's looking better already. Can we actually produce stuff while at peace? <gasps> we can. Wow. Work 
equipment, machete, scavenging experience. It's not bad. The Northern Forum. The old future tech facility that has now been named to Nova Boreas in perfect location for the capital of a Northern Legion. Public works have started to be done by the slaves to bring the capital and the standards of the cohort. The Forum will be the new marketplace from which all slave trade and goods will be shipped to the rest of the wasteland. That would be fantastic. Savage cars. Hey, arms workshops are pretty pretty nice. Using a wife. Well, we gotta do requires complete. Okay, interesting. Huh. Nothing else up here right now. Voice sends tools. We have found a cache of old world tools. Legion foundries. Machines make for good profligate cutting. Legion training. We need to train for all for battle all the time. Uh, that, that way we'll always be ready. Old Commonwealth roads. Old roads that used to link up the nation that existed in these lands are pretty well done. Well, let's save. If it goes well, great. If it doesn't, then it is what it is. But we should be able to cut down some of these enemy divisions here. We should have more than enough time before we do that. Deal with the trappers. I want you to go straight south. Breaking your backs. So Another scream. Masi and couldn't tell if that was one of pain, so or simply sheer anguish of being one of the many laborers in the arms factories of the Bone Cohort. Even one of the first recruited, as he had the most industrial experience due to the high reading ability, which was useful in keeping the few milling machines that the cohort utilized running. However, those books he read, read and never told him of the numerous number of safety accidents that would occur, and those that did describe seemed far more casual than the experience he had come to see his routine. Picking up pace towards the continued agonizing roars of human and machine at Wasian, could do nothing but lower his eyes at the sight of two men, or rather a single man who had been sliced cleanly in two. The corporate appeared to have been a rogue machete gladius that had gotten stuck on the gears next to him, an emerging pool of blood made itself known, pooling from the flesh and sinew of a non, now one-armed slave, crying in anguish. Now wishing to be flogged again. Mossian took the less bloody parts of the split slave's rags and fashioned a makeshift bandage from it, applying it to the man's stump. He pressed his hand against the slave's mouth, though the slave continued to holler in pain, albeit much more quietly. You listen here, if I'm, if I'm going to be responsible for the death of two slaves on my ship, rather than one, we'll have both of us lashed at least twenty times, with the nine... Uh, tales, no less. There's a doctor who specializes in the replacement of lost limbs just around the south side of the plant. I'm sure if you will notice your absence, take the proper part of your dead friend's torso and bring it to him. It's not ideal, but it'll have to do if either of us wish to live another day. Taking his hand out of the slave's mouth, the slave began to babble gibberish, but seeming to follow Mossius' orders. Upon the arrival of the daily inspection, Mossius only received his normal five lashings for letting a slave get caught in the machinery once again. At least it wasn't with the Gladius, of course. And can we start coring this stuff? That'd be quite nice. No, we don't have political power. Good god. Ooh. How are we supposed to core anything with no manpower or no political power, you know? Don't really understand it. But overall, we're winning. We're not winning in every battle here, but we're winning in a lot of them. Flamethrowers are nice. Good. The Trapper from Klamath. Slim was in the process of being crucified, but before the first nail was pushed to his hands, a man with bright green eyes came and yelled at the legionaries to stop. Or legionaries to stop. Uh, helping him to his feet, he could sense that this that maybe this was another one of his chances to slim his way out. I heard you were the best trapper of Eridanos. I think my brother will still have a job for you. Slim Pickle will join us as general. I heard you have the best gecko omelet recipe. Centurion wants to taste it. <laughs> well, whatever works. Diamond Peak would be pretty good. Arago. Now it's been split. I love it. Give him no respite. Good. Seed selection. Yes. This, huh? Buying male slaves. Just what we needed. Just what the doctor ordered. Um, a royal conquest. There's a big tribe in the south, a tribe with so much history, a leader of the Legion of the Legends, and Nothing much else. Nonetheless, they have to be dealt with before they become a thorn in our side, of course. Good. Dealt with. 
Ah, luckily. But I believe that'll end it us end it end it for today for us. Yeah. Oh, to get ready for them, we might actually be able to take out a royal as well before anything else major happens. They have a lot of puppets, unfortunately. Good God, they've got a lot. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like and subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. See what else we can do with the Bone Cohort. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.